That's beautiful. Serge is right behind me. So Roto and I needed to test some new equipment and we thought what better time to do it than in the spring and what better place to fly it than in the Sea of Galilee. But more specifically, we wanted to go to Capernaum and then head to the ancient country of the Gadarenes, or simply put, the east side of the lake at the slopes of the pigs. Gennesaret. This is the area where Jesus, 2000 years ago, cast the demons out of the possessed man. And of course, this poses a big problem. The distance between our controller and the top of the mountain is quite big. There are also cellular towers, electricity lines, slight rain, and a whole host of other problems that could potentially break the reception between the controller and have the drone fail safe, which means fly out of the sky, dead into the ground, and then we will have to hike the whole day just to try to find it and recover it. Yet despite all these dangers and obstacles, of course, we're still gonna try and do it. So sit tight, buckle your belts, and join us for this adventure mixed with fast flights, mountain dives, tech issues, and pure exploration of the beautiful land of the Bible. Oh, 55 beats per minute. That's not good. No. Okay. Slowly. Turtle steps. Oh, wrong shoes. Wrong bag. I feel like I'm gonna slide down. I won't be able to fly with this. With this heart rate. So what are we really doing here? Well, just a couple of weeks ago, Rhoda and I were in the United States of America. We didn't see that. And we bought some new equipment for our channel that we plan to use in the future videos. But before we can use this equipment, we wanted to learn how to use it, test it out, and make sure it's technologically kosher. So we came out to the Sea of Galilee. Oh, this is great. There's almost like a little landing pad here. Right now, it's the month of March and it's absolutely beautiful. And everything is blooming, it's green, and it's just gorgeous. That's good. Rhoda and I tried to find the location where we should launch the drone for many hours. And the reason why is because you can't just fly it. Because you have to look out for electricity wires. You can't fly next to people, so you have to make sure there are no people here. You want to make sure it's safe. You want to make sure that Rhoda will be able to spot the drone at all times. You also want to choose beautiful lines from where you start filming until you end the shot. And all this takes a lot of planning, a lot of exploring, and at times even trying to make a slow flight or even walk with the drone to test if you have the reception between the drone and the controller. So because this took a lot of time, we're in a great hurry because the sun is setting. And if we take too much time, we won't be able to film a good footage. So we made it up the hill. There's a nice launching pad here, but I think it's gonna be great reception if we fly from that ridge over there and all the way down and into the Sea of Galilee. I think I should have enough reception. Unfortunately, we didn't find this spot in time and the sun is about to set and it's already, the ridge is already in shadow, so. I mean, wouldn't you be able to edit some sun? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh, let's, let's not waste any more time. And just as we get our gear ready, suddenly... Oh! Yes, that is a wild boar, running out of the bushes a few feet away from us. That was super awesome. It was huge, and I know they're dangerous, they can ram you over. And it was so close. Well, you did a very uh, manly, loud roar there. And now that the danger is gone, or so we think, we're ready to fly. Jaron, you look like a man from the future. As I'm flying, Rhoda is my designated spotter. 
She is looking for the surrounding environment so that she may communicate any potential dangers that I'm blind to. Careful, you're going low. Kind of similar like marriage. Yeah, you're going the right direction, but be careful the lines, babe. There's electricity lines over there. Please notice that throughout this video you will see two separate flight views. One looks like this, and the other one looks more like that. The first view is what I actually see in my goggles when I'm flying. It's the live view from the drone. It's very low quality and it has an extreme wide-angle lens so that I'm able to see more obstacles as I fly. While the other view is the footage I get from the GoPro that is mounted on top of the drone. It has a phenomenal 5.1K resolution with 95 megabits per second of data stream using the latest H.265 HEVC encoding. This all basically means that at the right lighting it can deliver a stunning video like this. But of course such pretty footage doesn't come cheap. At least not for rookies like myself. Because in my first flight I drained the battery while I was still in the air and I had to perform emergency landing in the middle of nowhere. But more on that in just a bit. First we gotta do our test flight and see if the reception will be good enough despite all of the antennae around us. Be careful babe. Okay, I'm uh, going to get a little higher up here to get the whole view of the lake. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Okay, let's go for the dive. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally free falling. Okay, adding a bit more throttle. I'm going to try and uh, align the drone with the tree line. Oh, that's perfect. It's fast. Oh yeah, it can go up to 190 kilometers per hour, or is it like 120 miles an hour or something? But I'm going way slower than that, way slower. How's it looking? It looks so beautiful, but, but I think there's a problem. The sun is already set. Yeah. It's going to be, I think when we retrieve the GoPro footage, it's going to be way too dark to pick up all of the beautiful green colors. Oh man. Okay, I think I'm ready to head back and land this thing. Oh my goodness. No, Fuzzy, no! Oh. <laughs> that was great, man. Let's see the GoPro footage. I want to see how the stabilized version uh, looks like. Oh yeah, let's do this. So while this footage is great proof of concept, it's not good enough as we've missed the sunset and it turned out to be quite a bit too dark. But we are still eager to get our perfect FPV shot, so we've decided to go back the next day and try this again. However, unfortunately Rhoda could not come with me because she had previous commitments to help her family 
and normally we would have postponed it to another day, but this was possibly our last chance to fly before the cold front hits us with unprecedented rains and even snow. Yes, snow in the middle of March. So I called Mike and asked him if he would be my designated spotter for the day. And to my big surprise, he said yes. If you recognize Mike, that's no coincidence because he is our old good friend who joined us in the Dead Sea video. He was the one who provided the first ever drone footage in our videos. So if it wasn't for Mike, we would have never had these beautiful aerial shots. But there is more to Mike than just drones. So Mike is the one who did the photo for month of March and the cover of 2022 calendar. Thank you, Mike. Sh show us the camera you used. I'm using uh, Canon R6 with the uh, lens uh, Sigma 100, 150 to, uh, to 600 millimeters. And uh, what can I say? Amazing camera. Amazing camera. And that photo it was just absolutely unbelievable. When Rod and I saw it, we we're like, that's going to be the cover page. <laughs> so thank you. On behalf of everybody who's enjoying it right now in the month of March, thank you. Amen. Thanks to God. Amen. Um, but unlike yesterday's trip, today Mike and I have decided to go a bit farther around the lake to the eastern shores and hills, to the land of the Gadarenes. But before we get there, we made a quick stop at the beautiful Jordan River. Wow. It's <laughs> beautiful. I'm documenting our, our adventures. Wow. <laughs> After soaking in the beauty and even having Mike snap a few awesome pictures, we head out to our designated spot in the eastern shores. So we found this mountain over here, it's beautiful, everything is green and I think we're going to try and fly it from here. We found something beautiful, it could be very cinematic. So I think in an hour the sun is going to go right through that crack of the clouds. That should give some beautiful rays over this entire region. We can fly right there, then dive down follow the ridge but the weather is not on our side right now it keeps drizzling raining but no raining but we have good hopes that in an hour we'll be able to do something beautiful but while we wait we don't sit idle we will use the time to perform a few test flights to test the reception and the battery But just an FYI, if you think of ever flying a drone, please don't stand on the edge of a mountain on an unstable rock. But more about that in just a minute. The first lesson we learned was to keep an eye on the battery. 
it's quite easy to get captivated by the pretty scenery and forget to pay attention to the battery. When I first noticed that the battery was low, it was way too late to turn around. The drone literally started losing power and I could no longer have it fly straight. Even at full throttle, it was descending from the sky and rather quickly. When it landed, the battery cells were at 1.14 volts. That is so low that the battery has experienced an irreversible damage. But thankfully, we did not lose the quad. We were able to drive quickly to the emergency landing site and pick up the drone and the expensive GoPro 10. This was a great lesson in flight battery management, which also on the way back gave us an opportunity to spot a few local cows, birds, and even a common kestrel sitting on a tree. Mike is trying to take a picture. That's what they took. It's <sighs> beautiful. It's always wonderful to stop and appreciate the wildlife. It's kind of like an FPV drone, but created by God. It's faster, quieter, way more beautiful, and even has a personality. Kind of like an FPV drone, but no, not even close. And speaking of a drone, let's talk about the second lesson we've learned. And this one way more serious than the first. My knees are shaking. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's hard to describe, and one really has to put these goggles on to understand what it feels like, but it can get pretty scary. Your brain quickly forgets that you're wearing goggles and it literally feels like you're flying. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh lord, oh wow. Thankfully, Mike was there to hold me up. Mike, Kay. I need your help, can you hold me? <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> thank you. Okay, maybe like hold me hard by the shoulder. Yes, okay, thank you. If anyone was to see us, it would sure look a bit weird. But if we take the weirdness aside, I must say that this is a beautiful picture of friendship. When one is blind and his knees are shaking, when one feels like they're about to fall down the abyss, a friend is there to reach out their hand and hold you up until the danger passes and you're both on stable ground. It was very, very scary. I am returning. Thankfully, we've landed properly this time and learned to not fly FPV while standing on the edge of the mountain on an unstable rock. <laughs> when I got up there and I saw the view open up and that mountain just became this giant cliff and I faced down, my left knee started shaking and I thought I'm gonna fall down here because you're falling down with a drone. I've been flying this for months, or I thought <laughs> I can handle it. So next time, don't stand on this on the cliff when you're facing down. Something maybe like this, or even sit down. That was a bad idea. Praise the Lord, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you. But all of these lessons paid off, because now at last the sun peeked out of the clouds, revealing the bright and beautiful colors, and allowing us to capture the video that we've been chasing for two days.
Mission accomplished. But before we call it a day, Mike and I decided to make one last stop. Okay, so we got now to Gennesaret. This is the area where Jesus, 2000 years ago, cast the demons out of the possessed man. And the demons went into the herd of pigs and they ran down the mountains. Which mountain range? Somewhere over here. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna run down those mountains, but with the drone and a camera into the lake. Are you ready? I do. Are you ready? Almost. The sun isn't ready yet. We're waiting for the sun. While we can't really know for certain which mountain it was where Jesus performed this miracle, we do know it is in this area. And all of these mountains look pretty similar to one another. So this flight would give us good visuals of the area and the event. But before we fly, please remember to check out Mike's Instagram, where he posts the pictures of all of the wild animals he finds in Israel, including some fascinating ancient and biblical species. And from all of us here in Israel, we hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, God bless you. All right, guys, so we hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed the adventure. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Until then, God bless you. And like always, Roto isn't here, so you have to say this.